Hi folks, this will be about categorical variables and how to do them in R. And I will pair it a little bit with the guide that I put together for categorical variables. And so hopefully that will be helpful for this. There are There is a lot of text here and I will try to boil it down in this video. Uh, this might take uh, two videos to do. So we'll see what happens. But there are really just a couple of new ideas with categorical variables. It just looks really messy because we start to detail a lot more stuff. And so uh, before going through this, I encourage you to look through this guide if you haven't looked through the book yet either. Uh, I think this is my guide takes the book material and, and breaks it down even farther in a little bit more interpretable way, but I think the book does a pretty good job too. I just wanted to give you a little bit more of the rationale and a little bit more detail when thinking about how to work with categorical variables. So to just get some of the basics out of the way, a categorical variable is just a variable that has multiple groups and it's more than two because we have dealt with a variable that is just two categories before or two groups. We could call those indicator variables and they could take on zero to represent one group or they could take on one to represent another group. So we're just extending the idea from an indicator variable that has two groups and we're pushing that into variables like political party or education level or income bracket, uh, two things that have say three, four, five, six, seven groups and how we work with that because it can get complicated. So uh, without tediously reading through sort of line by line what I've done here, again, I encourage you to read through this uh, perhaps before following this video and there's a lot of text here too but I just want to show you, I just want to hit some of the basics and show you again how this works in R. So from a theoretical standpoint, what we're going to do is take, we're going to take our housing data that we have been working with. And we, I made up a categorical variable called neighborhood. And this neighborhood variable, again, I made it up, and but let's pretend that with the housing data that we've been working with, that each of the houses belongs to a particular neighborhood and that it can belong to, a given house can belong to one of four neighborhoods, A, B, C, or D. And that in itself, those four neighborhoods make up this one categorical variable on its own. And the thing that we can explain with a categorical variable is to say, well, in this case, maybe my housing price depends on what neighborhood my house comes from. Maybe there is an average difference in price between neighborhoods. And so that allows us to use some kind of neighborhood variable to help explain variation in price. So how do categorical variables look in your data? Well, I made a sample data set for you. I took our regular sample housing data from my zip code and I added a categorical variable and the variable recoded, as you will see, in this data. And let me move this up here. So if you first think of a neighborhood variable, you might first think of it like this. I've got a column that says neighborhood, and then I assign my neighborhood to each house, the neighborhood that that house is in. So in this case, house one is in neighborhood C, house two is in neighborhood A, etc. The issue, as we will see, is that it's not, doesn't make a lot of sense 
to have a variable that has a ton of different levels that are just groups. So what we actually want to do is what's called recoding. And I do not request, I don't have, you don't have to do this. I just want you to see how it actually is represented. And I want you to see how a categorical variable is made manually and what it actually looks like. So we can't just, the way we tend to work with categorical variables, we can't just use neighborhood like this. For our purposes, you will see that I will have you use it this way, but in terms of understanding what's going on, I want you to see that, that from an interpretation standpoint, we can't just leave this here. And that's because if we were to just put neighborhood in our model, it can't, each neighborhood needs its own potential coefficient with it, because that's why we're using this variable in the first place is to say each neighborhood may have a different average price. So we need variables to represent each specific neighborhood. So what we do is we say, great, well, let me start with my neighborhood variable and then let me make an indicator variable for neighborhood A, an indicator variable for neighborhood B, an indicator variable for neighborhood C, and an indicator variable for neighborhood D. What this allows me to do is for each house to say, is it neighborhood A, yes or no, one or zero? Is it in neighborhood B, one or zero? Neighborhood C, one or zero? Neighborhood D, one or zero? So what this tells me is, so for example, after I've made these indicator variables to represent each neighborhood, this first house is in neighborhood C. What that means is that the neighborhood A indicator variable is zero. The neighborhood B indicator variable is zero. The neighborhood C indicator variable is one and the neighborhood D indicator variable is zero. And we can go through and we assign that to each house in our data set. So let's actually see what that looks like. And again, I'm not gonna have you actually go through this process of recoding one or zero. That's a separate thing. That's a separate skill. You will get it in other classes if you take more stats. And I'm happy to show you techniques for doing that if you want. But I just want you to be able to work with and interpret a categorical variable for now. Okay, so I've already uploaded this data, this categorical Zillow data. And what I've done is I've already included the original neighborhood variable and all of these indicator variables that are a stand-in for this one neighborhood variable. And as you can see, it represents, it mimics exactly what I have in the guide here in how these indicator variables work. Every single house is some combination of three zeros and a one to represent the neighborhood that the house is in. Great. So if I just want to run a model of price versus neighborhood, if I just want to check to see if the average price varies according to neighborhood, I can do that with my indicator variables. There's one initial snag. You might think, Okay, if I want to model each neighborhood in my regression equation, I should probably put in every single indicator variable, and A, and B, and C, and D. Unfortunately, this is wrong, and you can't do that. The reason is that, well, what does beta zero mean? Well, beta zero is the average price of a house when everything else is zero. 
Well, if every neighborhood variable is in my model and every single one is zero, then what neighborhood am I even talking about anymore? Exactly. I'm not talking about anything. We Every single house is in a neighborhood. Therefore, we can't say NA is zero, NB is zero, NC is zero, and ND is zero. Therefore, we can't set up our model like this. What we do is we simply exclude one of these. We simply leave out one of the indicator variables. So for example, we could leave out neighborhood A. What this means is that neighborhood A is now represented by beta zero. And neighborhood A is now the reference group against which these other coefficients will be interpreted. What this means more generally is that when we have a categorical variable and we have all of these indicator variables, and A and B and C and D, when we want to run a model and model this categorical variable, we have to leave out one of the categories because we need the intercept to represent something. And the intercept will represent the one group of my categorical variable that I am not showing explicitly here. So if we want to do this manually, which I'm showing you to start with, and we want to have neighborhood A as the reference group, the reference neighborhood captured by my intercept, I exclude it and I simply include an NB, NC, and ND. And I can run that model. So looking at what we have here, I just want to point out that this model is not statistically significant. So if we were modeling this in research, we would stop and we would say, well, neighborhood does not significantly explain housing price here. But let's pretend that these were significant. What do these things represent? What do our coefficients represent? Well, it's very similar to what we saw when we had an indicator variable in the previous couple of weeks. Right now, there's no other variable in my model other than the categorical variable. So that's the only thing we need to worry about. So what the intercept means, since the intercept is representing my reference group, the intercept is the average housing price for my reference group. In this case, it's the average housing price for neighborhood A, or in this case, 434,388. The remaining coefficients are all interpreted with respect to the reference group, with respect to neighborhood A. Therefore, each coefficient is simply the difference between the average housing price in neighborhood A and that specific neighborhood. So we say that the difference between neighborhood A and neighborhood B is negative $5,825. What that means is that neighborhood B is $5,825 cheaper than neighborhood A. What that means is that neighborhood C is $47,638 more expensive than neighborhood A. Pardon me, let me make sure I phrase this right. Neighborhood B is $5,825 cheaper than neighborhood A. Neighborhood C, the houses there are an average of $47,638 more expensive, higher than neighborhood A. And in neighborhood D, the houses are $5,421 cheaper. 
so pause here on to the next.